Now, I've just showed you a video of Paolo Garbisi, the Italian fly half, who, um, who broke down in tears after kicking the winning conversion um, at the weekend for Italy to beat Wales. That's, that's the first time Italy have won a game in the Six Nations since, I don't even know, seven years ago, something like that. I just, I just had this rush of like inspiration. Follow me on Instagram. You would have seen. I just posted like the picture where he's like holding his his face like this, like crying. I just tagged like inspiration. Like that's just powerful, and that made that almost kind of made me feel like it was like a reminder of how I feel about rugby and stuff, and it it, it kind of reminds me of the way that I've. My chain, I've changed my my views on my goals with rugby, which I I don't I think think I've worded it this way before, but it's certainly something I've been thinking about the sort of last few months. Um, I've got a wee like thing to write down because there's a lot I want to to speak about, so I wrote it all down on my laptop. So if I keep looking down here, it's because I'm looking at my notes so I can kind of elaborate and talk deeply about this subject because. That the idea is that the main lesson here is passion basically. That's this whole video is kinda gonna come down to passion and it's that thing of you can't really I don't think you can achieve something at the best of your ability if you don't have that sort of deep care, that deep sort of passion for what you're doing. Um that's like uh I'm reading this book at the moment, I don't think of I think it's in my bag over there, but called The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Um, and in that he talks about um, having a just cause and that kind of that's probably made me more think about the way I changed my view on my rugby career like I'll we'll go through the video I'll kind of see how my thoughts have changed from this to this but I do want to speak a wee bit about like how to care or how we sort of identify that sort of care and I've kind of I put three things here so I put I put presence so like just being present and stuff um I've put insecurity and I've put deep fulfillment so the first one like presence in order to sort of deeply care about something we can we need to be sort of present while we're doing it if you know what I mean like you can't do it mindlessly because if you deeply care you want to be there you want to be in the zone you know what I mean like properly just just there Hold on, I'm going to check if my camera's recording because I don't want to go through this whole video and have to do it again. We're good. And the thing is, like, this is probably really hard, especially in like, modern society. Like, there's, there's a lot of people that spend, like, eight hours a day on the phone. And that's... It's kind of... It's because they care about being on the phone, if you know what I mean. Like, my screen time's not perfect. Like, I'm between three and four hours a day most days. And, like, that's, like, an hour on Instagram stuff. And... <sighs> It's not I don't I don't enjoy that, but it's like you care about going on your phone. Like I, I like there's some part like I care about it, that's why I keep doing it. But no, no, I don't like I don't want to do it. So it's more of a sort of addiction. Like I'm addicted to social media, I guess. Like I guess fucking I'm spending like an hour a day on Instagram, of course. Like I'm not I'm not like I'm not able to refrain from just picking up a phone and checking Instagram because it's like a habit that I do now. And that's something I want to get rid of. Which I've, I've set goals and stuff, and, and well, I've wrote them down finally in my journal last night. Um, and I'm going to set them as my new sort of lock screen on my phone, so I'm kind of reminded of them every day. But having that sort of addictive nature to something that's fulfilling as well at the same time, like, fuck, how did I word it here? Yeah, maybe that like maybe that's what passion is. It's it's something meaningful that you're addicted to, like obviously not like drugs or social media or like sex or something like that's you don't really want to be addicted to those things because it just leads to leads you down a dark hole of just not good. You can you know what I mean? So like the like the Paolo Garbisi thing, like he the Italy have not won a game in the Six Nations for seven years in the in the men's tournament. Um I'm not entirely sure. What the women's are like in the in the Six Nations, but I know the under twenties have been doing quite well the last few years. But this is like so the at least men's team. It's the first time they've won a Six Nations game in seven years, 
and that sort of that hardship of going through seven years like Paolo Luis is like a year older so he's like 21 22 he now obviously he would have grown up supporting Italy and stuff and watching them lose and lose and lose for so many years and the fact that he's kind of kicked the winning conversion to let them win like just like that onrush of emotions like you can see it's like cool cam collected kick the conversion and as soon as it went over he like fell to the floor like I showed you the video earlier and I'll play it at the end and stuff as well like when you have to suffer for so long for something just something simple like winning your first like it's not even a championship they still came sixth place out of six but for so long like they just didn't win a game and it's I've put here like because he'd never experienced that win with Italy in the Six Nations, like it'd been, he was probably like fifteen or something, the last time they'd done it. So since then, like you know how you change what from like fifteen to sort of twenty, you become basically like different pe person. Like well, I have certainly, I don't know, if, like some, you know what I mean. Like you, you grow older and stuff, and you sort of remember more vividly the last sort of five years than you would have between like ten and fifteen. That having that period where it's like it's normal for Italy to lose and then to actually win like something that simple like that's is driven by passion to get yourself into that position like what I've, I've put here is like big struggle gives great success and that's something you hear a lot of like success gurus and business and sports and all that they speak about all the time and it's funny how people will say oh you don't need to do that but <laughs> What have you achieved? Like, people are like, oh, it's not that hard to do. Like, you've not achieved much, have you? You have to go through difficult things. And, like, I, I know I've not achieved anything re really yet. Nothing, like, nothing major or world-breaking. Like, I've achieved, like, b the knowledge of how to be happy and all this sort of stuff and being happy on a regular, like, the, right? I remember I said in the last video I was talking about, I'm going to describe when I'm, when I'm talking about feeling happy and being happy. Like, I'm... And I am happy as in my my state of being is happy. Obviously, you don't have that feeling of happy every day, but I do most days. But there's obviously a day or two every sort of few weeks or something where something goes wrong and I get, like, really anxious about shit and sort that out from journaling or whatnot and just using wisdom to, <laughs> to kind of pull me through and stuff. And But that aside, like, it's like the harder the journey is to the destination the more you appreciate the views when you get to the destination. Have you ever been on like a, a long road trip or for myself, like a long hiking trip and you get to the end? How good does it look when you get like right to the end and you see all the views and it's, I could sit there for hours and just stare at mountains. That That's such a beautiful metaphor. Like, those like really just miserable journeys and you get to the end and some is worth it like but that also highlights the sort of thing of don't focus on the destination focus on the journey which like I do agree with because if you just the destination is always better when you focus on the journey <laughs> like if you just focus on taking like me and my mates, uh, Jacob and Lewis, were talking about the, the Will Smith sort of idea of like laying one brick at a time. So you're laying a brick, you're laying a brick, you're laying a brick. You're only focusing on laying this brick the best to the best of your ability. And if you don't do that, well, obviously, it makes the wall all wonky and stuff, and the foundations are all wrong, and there's one out of place. But if you make sure you put all your focus on laying this one brick, and the next brick, and the next brick, before long, you'll take a step back and think, oh shit, I've just built a wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you appreciate it so much more because you're not sitting fixated on the destination because it's never going to be as high as your expectation. Nothing's ever... what well, Nothing's ever as good as you expected it, or very rarely anyway. <laughs> I, this is why you need to do hard shit, like I spoke about in a video. I can't remember what order I've uploaded the videos in. So I like scheduled a few of them. So one of them's do hard shit. I'll obviously ping up here somewhere. Now, 
I'm going to Insecurity and um, Deep Fulfillment, which um, which I kind of work together like it's two two edges, two sides of a double edged sword. I'm not, I'm just, you know what I mean? It's, they work together basically, right? So before, like, well, my goal it still is, but it's not my my focus. Like I don't think, oh, I want to do this. So it's like I want to be the best rugby player in the world, but. That's almost one of those things. Like I'll probably not achieve that because it's it's opinion based. So it's like it's nice to have that drive to 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 be the like I I don't think I can not live with that drive to be the best rugby player in the world because it's it just gives me so much fulfillment. But I want to explain why that was bad. Like it came it came from a place of insecurity. Like it was basically because I wanted that like ego validation and like to be seen as the best and like admired by so many people. That used to be like the reason that I was, that I was trying to be the best rugby player. Cause I was like, well, fuck if I do this, then everyone will love me, sort of thing. Which is, uh, as you can tell, is quite insecure. <laughs> but um, so I think that that kind of came from like a place of not t not totally being accepted in high school, which might sound a bit weird from people I went to school with. But like it, like I I got along with pretty much everybody at school like I was like there's nobody that I had like beef with or anything nobody that I wouldn't like be able to hold like at least like a minute or two conversation with of like how are you doing today and all that sort of stuff um obviously there were some people that I don't think I ever spoke to but like like who in their year can say they've spoke to every single person um the point is I spoke to most people and I would like got on with most people in my year um, and I actually like to be honest like most people did like appreciate me and stuff like obviously I was one of the like, you can see fucking bigger bigger guys in the year well I was the biggest like muscular wise I was the only person well one of the only people that really took the gym seriously um, and I started to show people started appreciating that I was known as the big guy it was <laughs> um got a lot of compliments and shit I'm seeing a lot more t attention from girls and stuff although I never really done anything about because I was dumbass <laughs> um yeah I was that actually leads on a, a wee bit of like in my uh, in my high school yearbook I actually got voted as the hottest boy in the year and uh I was still a virgin so I was, that shows you how weak my game was um but like my thoughts kind of turned to be like this is where the sort of goal was starting to but the goal of rugby came from like 2015 world cup that's where like my main inspiration was i went to see a couple of games down in newcastle but like i was starting to think like if i get like the best rugby player i can get all this this like status and you get that validation like you, it'll be easier for me if i'm if i'm the greatest girls will will be easier to get when i'm the greatest that was like fucking like that's not something I thought about every day, but that was definitely like one of the main sort of things that I thought about. Like if I'm the, the greatest and no one can say shit to me, like I'm, no one will, uh, everyone will love me. Like I, it was almost like it came out of a fear of not being loved, which I still need to sit down and journal about because that shit confused me because I, I got raised pretty well, to be honest. But always had friends around and stuff. So, but like that's, that's some shit for another video. I'll tell you, talk to me about that because like, I've got some some pretty, um, it's a pretty deep delving to go into into this video. It's exciting. Ah, all right. Yeah, I think I think like one of the reasons I felt like I didn't quite fit in was because like I had strict appearance than most other people in terms of like I wasn't able to just do anything that I wanted. You know what I mean? I always had to make sure I got permission and stuff. So that meant sometimes I wasn't able to, I wasn't allowed to go do certain things. Um, I think it's more out of them worrying about where I'm going and stuff, but it did it did create a certain feeling of like being left out when everyone else was being allowed to do things, and I was just having to sit at home or something or just like do something different, which was it did it did take a massive toll on me um, in terms of my social life and stuff, but luckily I'm over that shit now because I just do. Most of what I want, which is, you know, just working or training or going for 
coffees or meals or whatnot. It's not, it's not that deep, you know. <laughs> but um, and I was like, kind of feeling separate from like you know the popular group. That was probably what hurt the most because I didn't have that status. Um, which I'm really glad. Like, like I dropped that sort of like fifth year, going into sixth year. I was kind of more with like the middle group, like people that were like similar to me and stuff and. Sounds like a real shit way to, of describing it, but like, fucking it is what it is, fucking high school. Um, so I, like this, this uh, sort of insecurities and stuff, I, I changed this from like a bit of introspective work, a bit of journaling sort of stuff, but like I never really, really thought it, it was journaling at the time. It was, it was actually like after some like arguments and shit that I had with my ex while we were together, um, she always like sort of, Pointed out like the reason I'm like reacting a lot the ways that I was and sh shit like that was just because of like insecurities and stuff like she can tell like I was afraid of some shit or some like, I was insecure about some stuff which is why I was kind of reacting the ways that I was and this kind of led me like one night I was sitting in my flat on my own um, I just got my laptop out and started typing down all my insecurities and all my fears um, and like researching all this shit to figure out like how you how you get rid of them and fuck I sat there at my like dining room table in my flat just fucking crying my eyes out for like an hour like I haven't I don't think I've cried like that for fuck like it's like I don't know it's, it's a different type of cry <laughs> you know when you're doing it for like an hour for realizing all this shit about yourself and actually looking into yourself and, and feeling all this but it's like a deep deeply important thing for me to do like that I broke up with her like a few probably a few months after that yeah yeah like two three months after that um, and I'd, to be honest, I'd be kind of neglecting, like, actually working on this shit for a while while we're still together and stuff. I'm not going to go in, or maybe not in this video, I'll probably, I might speak about it at some point in the future because it is, it is relevant to how I view relationship and stuff now, but that's, it's not really relevant for this video about how we broke up. But I'd kind of neglected, like, the actually doing work on it until, like, after we, a few months after we broke up, I started, like, getting back into sort of self-improvement to try and figure out how to get rid of these insecurities and like it was just like through like listen to the podcast and diary of CEO and stuff all that that I've like mentioned before um and like I just I just really wanted to to improve this stuff like I was kind of I was kind of sick of it like <clears throat> being that insecure little boy that was like fucking crying I cried a lot in front of my eggs to be fair <laughs> like um yeah, it is what it is. Um, it's probably, I don't think it's something I would do now. Just cry in front of a, a girl, especially not in the way that I did. Maybe if it's like, like Paolo Garbisi breaking down after fucking winning shit, I wouldn't mind doing that shit. But like, that's, that's shit for like a different video. It's not like a. Yeah, it's going to be called something about toxic masculinity, but it's deeper than that. It's not. It's, it's something else like you know what I mean like it's it's hard to explain without people like oh, oh no you're fucking toxic masculinity and you're insecure because you don't want to cry in front of women but <clears throat> I'll maybe explain at some point in the future I'll uh, I'm building up to because I want I do want to talk a wee bit more about sort of relationships and stuff but I'm still very sort of fresh to dating and all that sort of stuff so I've not really got a lot of like affirmed wisdom in my head like affirmed being like I've went through it and I've actually know what I'm talking about like I've just got like the one relationship and uh yeah so it's anyway I'm going on a fucking tangent here so what that right what that right yeah so I would like find the videos about like happiness and fulfillment and then I realised basically that I'm not the only one who's actually feeling like this it's people that have went through this sort of like making big goals out of ego and then like basically just learn how they change their, their perspective and it's like it literally is a change of perspective and it's like I just needed to be a bit more grateful about all the shit that I've been through in the past like all the shit that's happened like see if then there's like an advantage whether it was bad or, or good like you just make be be happy that everything was in your life I spoke in that video that I've done about Hamza's principles for happiness with gratitude oh, so powerful so good like so I just like 
I changed like changed my perspective. Like the Infinite Game the book I spoke about is like they talk about that just cause. I was thinking like, how is it a just cause for me to be the the greatest rugby player in the world? Like, so the sports will be a bit more finite. It's about like, it's about winning basically, but it's also about achieving a certain vision. And like rugby is a team sport, right? So one player out of fifteen being the best, it doesn't really work that way. That's not how rugby really works. So my, I changed my perspective from want to be the best player in the world to wanted to be on the best team. Like my main goal was to win things with teams, bonding with teams, and I wanted to lead. I don't want to just be in that. I want to lead the team because I feel like I've got so much passion for this win. I almost want to bring other people with me. And like being a leader just makes me feel like I, I feel fulfilled from from leading. Like even just in small situations. Um, like you're out with your friends or something and you, you make a decision or you're eating or some like small shit like that I like leaving like I don't want like to leave all the time like, I don't want to be constantly having to think about everything and, but like in terms of rugby I like that I want that responsibility on my shoulders to, to lead a team to, to win in big things because I feel like the way let me just check because I might, I might be able to just go sort of free sort of wing it here um, lead a team to win. Yeah, that's sort of the advice that I'm sharing on YouTube. Having the wisdom to, ah, uh, well, yeah, that's like having the wisdom to change your perspective is, is literally, the most powerful tool in the world. Just wisdom in general, because it allows you to see multiple perspectives and create your own. You need to be a philosopher and make your own perspective but that, that's another video as well like, like, I've got like a massive list of shit that I need to make videos on and it, exc it does excite me because every every week as well like I'm, something happens and I want to make a video on that like this only happened this weekend but I'm like neglecting shit that I wrote like a, two months ago that I want to make a video on but I think this is, this is quite irrelevant because it's still so fresh in my mind but yeah like talking about the leading I'll just sort of yeah right free or just wing because this bit's about passion I just want to speak from from the chest you know from the heart um, that when I watched Paolo Garbisi breakdown like that I felt unbelievable I just felt so happy for for Italy for Paolo for the Reds like for the whole of the team because the the thing that they'd done was they inspired millions of people like, do you really, like, I'm one person that made me feel good. I'm not even Italian. Think about all the Italians in the world that feel good. And think about, like, our most, I'm pretty sure, England fans, Ireland fans, France fans would have loved to watch that. They would have loved to see Italy win. How many, that's tens of millions of people that they've inspired by winning a game of rugby. I'm just gonna sit with that. I want you to sit with that. How powerful is that? <laughs> this is what, that's why I love rugby so much. Like, just winning a game of rugby can change people's moods, even if it's just for a day, for a week. Like this happened. It's Monday now, and this happened on Saturday. Two days later, I'm still feeling like I'm still watching this. A video. Um, I'll, I'll put the video at the end of like have the score in the try with the Italian, um, the Italian commentary in the back. It's like uh, the fullback Capuzzo is like, like Capuzzo, Capuzzo, Capuzzo. It's like that's it, like when it's like Caramese, Caramese, Caramese. <laughs> like one of those, uh, one of those types of things. So it was, it was quite fun to watch. But I'll, I'll put it at the end. Uh, hopefully, I don't get like copyright or some shit. But like, how powerful is it to? To simply win a game of rugby and make so many people feel happy. It was the same with France winning the Grand Slam. Like everyone loves French rugby. I don't know who, care who you are. Watching French rugby is absolutely beautiful. And it makes people feel so happy to see them be successful. <laughs> Why can I not create that for Scotland? Create that for the British and Irish Lions? I want to be part of creating that feeling for people. And maybe that does come out of a 
sense of insecurity of or a sense of sort of ego of wanting to be the guy who the wanting to be the guy who gives that good feeling but I don't think there's anything wrong with that <laughs> because at the end of the day your one action can make a million people extremely happy even if it's just for a short period of time you know to spread that positivity it brings me a deep deep sense of fulfillment because as as humans we're here to serve each other we're here to help each other we're like a tribe and if you can make a massive tribe of tens of millions of people feel good it makes me feel like I've done my duty as a human and it fulfills me beyond description like I'm using the same words I can't think of anything else to say it just <laughs> I just want you to understand that. I just want you to sort of feel that. Imagine having that power. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know how long this video is. I've got some. I've got a lot of shit to do for the rest of the day. So, yeah. Catches, catches later.